What does it mean to write off an asset? So I'm gonna start this video poking fun at some TikTok videos and other videos on the internet that have these very uneducated, cute little people going, oh, I bought a new car, it's a write-off. I bought a big screen TV and I got a new phone and it's a write-off. That is all interesting and very, very misleading. You just don't get a write it off. Stay tuned. I'm gonna go through all the legal details and exactly how you do it so you do it right and then it can be a write-off, not just some joke. All right, let's talk about three things. What is a write-off? What does that even mean? I think it's a funny term. Like it's not even in the IRS code, a write-off. I mean, it's a deduction by law, so that's cute. So we're gonna talk about what is a write-off? What is the legal way to do it? And what can you write off? So we have three big things to talk about. Many of you, if you're a business owner, sole proprietor, you gotta get you out of that state into a corporation or an LLC, something that's gonna actually give you 81,000 pages of deductions, right off. So I'm going to kind of keep poking fun at it because I just think there's so much misinformation that's going on in this bathroom wall called the internet. And everyone became a guru in March and April 2020. And it's just not accurate. So first of all, what is a write off? Okay. So by definition, because uh, if you've been watching my videos, I always go to the dictionary and say, what does it say? A write off indicates that an asset is no longer expected to produce any income. Usually the case of an asset is impaired or no longer productive or useful to the owners. For example, a bad piece of real estate, a business that just isn't performing, stocks that aren't performing. I mean, you can write off anything. So I guess technically to kind of correct my first kind of snarky, funny, sarcastic saying, it's a write off on your balance sheet. It's a deduction on your P&L, right? So when you actually want to write it off, oh, let's say, let's pick a business that I've wrote off in the past. So I, yeah, so I've invested and some businesses, they were supposed to do a big media company. Kevin Harrington and I both got some equity in it. That was fun. But again, the owners blew it and no equity, no payoff. So you say, well, what was the value of that asset? Well, I don't know. I mean, it didn't make a lot of money, uh, but you can capture it and do a write-off on the balance sheet, writing off the asset on your tax return. But again, a car and some of the things that are happening on TikTok and your phone and your computer, like what, what's really in the expense line of deductions is different than an asset write-off. So an asset write-off would be, you know, you have a piece of property and uh, this is a true story. I was searching for a story there. Somebody who did a tax lien actually in New York and didn't do enough due diligence and bought a piece of property that had been literally no one's paid tax on for years. They got it for like pennies on the dollar, literally. And once they got it, put it back on the market, clean the property up a little bit, didn't do enough, still didn't do enough environmental research and beneath the ground years, I mean, decades and decades ago, it was a gas station. So it's a super fun site, they call those. So whoever buys the property is legally now responsible to clean up the super fun site. Hence, due diligence is critical. So you might look like you got a great asset, he had to write it off because he's never gonna put that back on the market. I know he tried to put it back on the market through another tax lien sale and stopped paying taxes, but who's gonna buy it if you actually do proper due diligence and you knew there was oil and a total disaster called the Superfund below the dirt. So there's another example of a proper write-off. So that's what a write-off is. So what's the legal way to do it? Ideally, whatever asset you have, even your own personal business needs to be in an entity. And in America, because we are yeah, US centric in our teaching, but I've traveled in six continents. So in principle, this works around the world. So in America, you can have an LLC, a limited partnership, an S Corp, C Corp, or a trust. Other corporations, I'm married to a Canadian. You can have limited proprietary, you can have a partnership, you can have a corporation, you can have a numbered company, which is even like less than that, and get those started for uh, pretty reasonable rates. So through your company and through the tax code of whatever country you're in, you can write off the assets. But before that, like during the operation of the business, you have income and expenses. And those expenses are legally deducted against the income. And in most countries, there's actually some gross sales tax. There's actually a GST in Canada. In America, what's cool and why we are still the greatest country for this is we get to make money, we get to do our deductions, and then we pay tax and your assets, which would be like landed on the balance sheet, gonna be written off through that. So there is some, you know, more 
legal definitions. I'm not going to get into it, but I can tell you if you're not a company, you got to go to askworld.com and say, Hey, I need to talk to somebody about getting corporately structured properly. I have a huge team and uh, I got to talk to somebody probably about your bookkeeping. You probably shouldn't be doing your own books because you don't know how to do a lot of this stuff. One of the things I see with most people trying to do write-offs and just basic write-offs or deductions is real estate. A real estate purchase or a sale is spread out on your income, your P&L and your balance sheet. And most bookkeepers who are just, you know, basic, which by the way, that's part of your interview and due diligence is ask them, have they ever done an asset, you know, purchase in their set of books? It's not just, you know, booking, you know, I sold a book, I, you know, got a book. I mean, you're not doing just easy transactions. There's actually whole deduction schedule, depreciation schedule. If you don't book it right, you actually can't take those advantages. So make sure you get some legal help. I have a huge legal team of bookkeepers accounting. They're a totally separate company, but I've used them for decades and love them and they've done amazing work for our clients. Again, not giving you advice, giving you education. I just know a lot of this stuff. It's not hard to talk about it. I just wanna talk accurately. There's a lot of people out here not giving you accurate information. So what can you write off? Before I go there, I want you to subscribe, click the notification button and share it with your friends. I want you here every day, five days a week. You are some of the people that you spend time with. So if they're in a very old conversation, which some of you probably are in an old conversation, right? You learned a lot from Susie Orman, Dave Ramsey, the traditional financial world, your parents who didn't know a lot, and you've got some misinformation out there. So the different terms and the different things I talk about, we have a bunch of playlists from how to use a credit card, how do you get this LLC I'm talking about, of tons of hours, tons of hours. How do you do a team? How do you find due diligence? How do you do all this? So just go up to the search bar and search for it. If you can't find it, go to the comment section and say, hey, talk more about this. I would like some videos and information. So this is an educational channel for you five days a week. Ultimately, I want you to make money and then help you become a millionaire. My book, The Millionaire Maker, has a whole prescription on how to do it in three to five years. It is not difficult. It's different and guaranteed different than you've been taught. And you got to do it in the right order at the right time. So back to our topic at hand, what are legal write-offs? So I'm just going to give you a simple list and I have a whole bunch more lists on my website, the integratedwealthsystems.com. You can go there. I have tons of lists, but here's kind of the basics that a lot of people I think don't do, right? So your self-employment taxes, right? If your business is set up as an S-corp, you can deduct part of that employment tax if you pay yourself, obviously, or take distributions. Home office and all the utilities associated proportional to what you use in a, as an office. You can write off your vehicle, same thing. You can write off your phone, you can write off your computer, any equipment that you need, right? Here we are in a studio recording, all this equipment is a deduction to that company. You can write off marketing, you can write off insurance, you can write off any education, you can write off your business trip, you can write off your shareholder trip. I mean, there are so many things like once you start living the corporate life that I talk about on this channel and really living business and financial life, you're never going to go on a vacation. It's one of my kids' biggest gripes. So like, mom, how can we never get to go on a vacation? I said, why would we? We're going to do a business trip. In fact, I was talking to somebody from South Africa today and she's like, why were you in Africa so much? And I said, we love safaris. And I said, we'll be back and I will put on a seminar. I'll like put it out and say, hey, we're going to do that. I'm in a wine business. I'm in real estate. So you can actually take an entire trip and write it off as a business expense if you do it properly and legally. And there's actually code to that. And again, don't try to figure this out on your own. Get a team, use my team. There's a lot of interesting humans out there that don't know it all. They're just gonna give you a piece of the puzzle. I want you to see the whole puzzle so you can make better and informed decisions. So stay here on the channel. We'll be back tomorrow. Make sure you watch the video. And if there are, again, topics you want, go to uh, my comments. And go to asklaurel.com. I just started this cool new membership where you can text me 24 seven to like a local Northern Nevada 775 number. We're live two days a week. And actually we're doing a bunch of YouTube lives coming soon. So stay tuned for that and look forward to uh, being in a relationship with you and teaching you more about business and money. Talk tomorrow.